All right. Rollerblading has some of the wildest world records ever accomplished. People are constantly trying to push the boundaries and raise the bar higher. We'll be looking at who's gone the furthest, the highest, the longest, the fastest. Some you might know, others you won't. And I'm saving the most dangerous one till last. So uh, stick around to the end. All the stunts are performed by professionals. Do not attempt this yourself. Full disclosure, it's been a while since I've watched Record Breakers or owned a copy of the Guinness World Records, but these are like all official according to their website. Welcome to another high-flying edition of Record Breakers. Yep. Rollerblading being what it is, I'm pretty sure there's a few that haven't actually been like legitimately certified. So let me know what they are in the comments below. Let's tuck straight into it with a ridiculous one from Ty Chris. For those of you who don't know who he is, his wheelhouse was skate invert. And he's one of the few people who has transcended rollerblading. He was on Dancing with the Stars. He was in a ruck of other TV shows. He was in TV adverts. He's even done a TED talk. And somewhere in between all of that, when he was bored of shooting himself into orbit and doing double backflips, he was like, how can I get a real buzz on and do something for my home country of France? I know, I'll drop in off the Eiffel Tower. So in 2010, in front of a crowd of thousands of people, he dropped 12 meters and 50 centimeters off a platform into a 30 meter ramp. The first time round, he didn't quite do it, so he went back up again to get the job done, much to his parents' dismay. Apparently he's going for a world record. And then he done the thing, the complete loony. And if you're wondering why it dropped and turned into a slide, it was to soften the impact at the end, because he'd previously hurt himself staying up the day before practicing. This wasn't actually his first world record. He'd got one six years prior in 2004 at the Summer of Records. Basically a whole event where the main aim is to break world records. A little bit like record breakers in the UK, I guess. We'll be joined in the studio by a man who's broken nearly every record in the book for hot air ballooning. There was all sorts going on. You had a bunch of lads trying to string together a load of frisbee throws, some women walking past each other with inflatables on a small path. I have absolutely no idea what that record is about. What are they doing? Then you had Ty Chris, who set the record for the highest hand plant or an invert, jumping two meters out of the vert onto a separate platform and then back in again. He's a proper entertainer, isn't he? Get up there! He wasn't done there though, the day wasn't over. After he'd had a little break, a kilogram of moles and fritz, he was like, I'm gonna get after some others. I want more. He then set the world record for the most consecutive McTwists, doing 25. <laughs> then, a month later at the same event, but just in a different place, Get a taste for the McTwist. He set the world record for the highest McTwist at two meters and 35 out of the ramp. If Ty Chris gets a sniff of a world record, he's after it, man. Imagine what he was like as a kid. If you needed somebody to do it there, call on Ty. Get, get Ty to do it, man. He's bound to do it, man. He's a nutter. I heard at school they got all the dinner ladies to lie down in a row and he did a front flip over the lot of them. From Ty to another person who's transcended rollerblading, Chris Haffey. Oh yeah! I think it's safe to say everyone considers Chris Haffey as one of the greatest rollerbladers ever, if not the greatest rollerblader ever. He's done heaps of jaw-dropping tricks and has chalked up a plethora of iconic skate sections. And he's done a lot, always full of amplitude, not scrimping on the madness. So it's not too much of a surprise he's got a world record. Well, the thing is with this one, it's not actually officially listed on the Guinness World Record site, but he has done it on video twice, so we'll give it to him. Maybe he should just call like uh, Ty Chris up, get him in a headlock, get him on that French show and then he can do it again. Oh, I digress. The year was 2001, Haffy was just 15 and trying to work out the best way to get through his frames in one grind. So Rob G found him the 666 rail and they both set about doing it. 666 rail, what does that mean? Because it's 666 feet long. <laughs> this guy, he was in it. The thing is utterly enormous. Well, to be a little bit more accurate, it curves and winds for 203 meters. It's Janemonosaurus. Whatever you say, Gigantosaurus. The thing was so long, he said he had to listen to music and just focus on that. Otherwise, watching the ground, scenery and support posts fly by was making him overthink it and lose his balance. Have you ever looked at somebody's eyes who's looking out the window on the train and they're watching things and their eyes are just like, 
rapidly going like side to side like that. I imagine that's what it would have been like. <laughs> it took four visits to the rail, trying at least two hours at each visit before he eventually got it. Immediately after, Rob G matched him by doing the whole thing as well, which he actually said would happen. I'm here to break a world record. When asked if he would do a different grind on the thing, he said, nah, but he said he wouldn't mind going back and doing the front side again because it was so much fun. So he did. In 2010, he went back up there again to film a short little video and it didn't even look like it was too much bother for him, really. We make it look easy. I mean, it just shows if you stick with anything, like you're eventually gonna conquer it. As long as you got the determination. And just like Ty, Chris has got another one as well. Of course he has, man, he's Chris Affey like. And this one is actually official. I think he must have got himself pumped up after doing the 666 rail again. Because a year later, on the 9th of December 2011, Chris went for the unorthodox wakeboarding zip toe technique to generate himself enough speed to do a massive jump. He first clocked up 28 meters. The speed the toe was dragging him up is actually horrifying. And those little running man movements would have like made me throw up. But Chris went for another jump. The second was slightly more stable, but still like nerve wracking to watch. And this time Chris clocked up a jump of 30 meters. That's about uh, 98 foot. And that earned him the world record of longest jump ever on rollerblades. The record was actually previously held by our mate Ty Chris who jumped 29 meters at the famous French landmark Sacré Coeur. I wouldn't bet against him coming back and trying to go further. He should try and jump across the River Seine. Now for one that's a little bit different, a little bit outside of the aggressive side of things. Uh, in the words of Ronan Keating, and that's definitely the case for Dirk Auer. This is the most dangerous thing that I've ever done. Dirk's big plan was to ride a roller coaster on his blades. He falls forward, his head goes down in there. That could be the end of it. He had a helmet, a leather suit, and specially modified rollerblades. After two years of hard planning and months of training, he set about doing it. Are you sure you want to do this? Of course he was, man. He just went for it. Battling G's and high speeds, he smashed out the roller coaster ride in 60 seconds, earning himself a spot in the record books. Quickly, I've got some new bags. Hey, cheers for that. Spotty dog. Spotty dog snack sack. Available now. Link in bio. We're heading to Germany. Known for very long parties and giant fish tanks. Germany has a fair few decent rollerbladers, but none of them have achieved what Mirko Hansen has. Mirko was an enthusiastic rollerblader, but he got to the point where he thought, I've gone as far as I can with this, and the next logical step was to stick the rascals on his hands. Didn't fancy just try and vert or like wizard skating maybe? With a lot of tough training, I learned more and more. For example, to skate on one hand and jump over a ramp. Hold on, does he mean together or are they separate things? Like, he could roll a blade on his hands and jump a ramp and then he could roll a blade on one hand. Or could he actually roll a blade on one hand and jump a ramp? The sport requires a high level of physicality and only with dedication and training can a person learn to maintain balance. This sport, mm, I don't know about that. Do you remember trans world sports? They used to have all sorts of things on that show like Kabaddi. But I think even they would have been like hard pushed to convince people that rollerblading around on your hands was a sport. But, you know, fair play to him. At the end of November 2017, after four years of training, Mirko took his trusty K2 Mac 100 skates, put them on his hands and set a new world record by belting it 50 meters in just 8.55 seconds. Good on you, you loony. Are those fake hands? No. The Germans do like a slightly odd world record. Another example is the fastest inline skating marathon dressed as a superhero. In 2018, Jochen Glassbrenner dressed as a superhero and smashed out the Berlin Marathon in 1 hour, 12 minutes and 55 seconds. And I mean, obviously he was dressed as the Flash. The longest duration on inline skates while spinning three hula hoops is six minutes and seven seconds by R.S. Furun. <laughs> Back to the uh, trick side of things again and the French mate. Another nation that loves a world record. Are we world record ready? In 2005, Roman Godener went for a two-piece. 
first he went for the highest ever 360 flat spin at 5 meters and 40 centimeters I'm not sure if that's like the perfect flat spin but you know it's an official record apparently and he also has the highest 720 at 4 meters and 25 centimeters unfortunately I couldn't find the official clip for that one but I did find this which is a reminder of like the risks people are taking when they're trying to achieve these records glad to see he recovered from this one the other flying Frenchman bagging himself a spot on the world record books is controversial figure Stefan Afano. He loves big stunts, huge spins, and also throwing a complete wobbler, one of which was broadcast worldwide at the 2008 ALG World Championships. After losing out to Frankie Morales, he had a complete meltdown, man. He's also managed to get himself banned from Winter Clash and the Fees. <laughs> but that's not stopped him from setting the world record for consecutive flat spins when he did 16. Again, I couldn't source any official footage on this one, but I imagine it's like being on the walls. It's man, 16 in a row, that'd be horrible. Oh, out of my head. I imagine another way to recreate that feeling would be to lie down on a roundabout and have somebody just spin you around for ages until you slide off the thing. Talking of massive spins, who remembers Shane Yost? Shane was a phenomenal vert skater with really clean style and incredible flair. He was the first to ever land a Switch 1080 and then at the Gravity Games in 1999, he went all guns blazing for the first ever frontside 1260. He had a few goes, but he just couldn't seem to stick the landing. But with the crowd going absolutely bananas for him, he got back up there and he landed the thing. Skipping forward to 2013 and 16 year old Wake Shepman. Kind of feels like Wake has been training for this moment from a very young age and he's definitely very at home skating big transition. So in the August of that year he blasted out the first ever 1620 on rollerblades which is four and a half spins. My washing machine's not even capable of four and a half spins. Then a few years later in 2016 he did the trick again in front of a massive crowd on the last stop of the Nitro Circus Tour. World record. Now for a few that involve going really, really far. Run, Forrest, run! Run, Forrest! In 1992, we had the 25th Olympic Games in Barcelona. Barcelona. Old Billy Boy Clinton was elected as the 42nd US president. Our favourite backward jean-wearing duo, Criss Cross, released Jump. Criss Cross will make you jump, jump. Uh, uh. And Damien McGee, skated from Land's End to John O'Groats in a record-breaking, probably soul-destroying, nine days, five hours and 23 minutes. Oh, crikey, mate. That is 1,189 miles, about 132 miles a day. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. If I'm on public transport for more than an hour to go skating, that annoys me. 132 miles a day for nine days. I reckon after about 50 miles, I'd start hallucinating, man. Looking down on my feet, look like hobgoblins, like, whoa, man. The fastest marathon backwards on inline skates is one hour, 38 minutes and 40 seconds. This was achieved by Thomas Palmi, again at the Berlin Inline Skating Marathon. <laughs> Thomas basically said, yeah, man, it was double hard, but when I was struggling, I just thought about Jeff Stockwell and how good he is at skating fakie. The fastest 20 cone slalom in inline Line skates is 5.04 seconds. This was achieved by Guo Fang of China. Surprised he didn't shake his hips off. That'd be like living inside a snare drum or something. The greatest distance on inline skates in 24 hours is a staggering 337.77 miles. This was achieved by Maro Guenzi in 2004. Everyone loves a conga. And in Spain in 2016, the longest inline skating chain record was broken with 321 participants. I reckon that one could be absolutely destroyed at the Winter Clash, man. Just get everybody in line going around the skate park. Come on, man. That's what we want. We want people doing stunts and we want, wow, the records being broken. Have you ever heard of Frisbee Rob? There's two things that Frisbee Rob loves. One, Frisbee, obviously. The other one, rollerblading. 
And do you know what he really double loves? He's doing them both at the same time. He loves it so much that he's got himself a couple of records. He's got the longest flying disc throw and catch on inline skates. And also the longest flying disc time aloft on inline skates. Which if I understand this correctly, is him just lobbing a frisbee, but he's on skates when he does it. Hang about, so if I just combine anything else with inline skates, I could probably smash out a few records there, couldn't I? Like, I'd do a little bit of fishing with my skates on, like, biggest cod ever caught or something on inline skates. <laughs> Most bullseyes in a row on inline skates. Welcome to Bullseye. It's a game about the nation's most popular indoor sport. Most boiled eggs eaten in a minute on inline skates. Biggest thumbs up ever given on inline skates. Look at that one, mate. Oof. Hey guys, so this is my thumb. I've never lost a thumb battle. <laughs> People might think that's stupid, but there is actually a world record for somebody doing a bungee jump and dunking a biscuit into tea. One thing we haven't covered so far is speed. The fastest speed on inline skates downhill was achieved by Sandro Bovo of Italy when he clocked in at 77.47 miles per hour. You gonna skate down that massive hill really fast? Yeah. No Bovo, mate. My cousin actually got stopped by the police once for uh, breaking the speed limit skating down a hill. I don't know if they thought that was gonna put him off, but he didn't. That was just like a reward. He was like, oh, shit. Yeah, nice one. <laughs> Broke the speed limit, did I? The fastest 100 meters on skates is 12.97 seconds, achieved by Abhisek Naveo of India in 2020. Randomly reminded me of a TV show that estimated the speed a cockroach could run if it was human size. They made an animation and everything. <laughs> Now this is a dangerous one, and you might have actually seen a few people getting sketches off cars in rollerblading before. I'm pretty sure Sam Crofts clocked up a bit of G-force getting a toe in off Jamie Harris in a, one of his promo videos. He was absolutely firing along, man. He's got fires like Chris Hoy. But the official world record-breaking speed achieved by a toed inline skater is 163.23 miles per hour. Can you imagine the speed wobbles and the fear? That could go wrong, you just you just blow yourself to pieces. This was achieved by Swedish lunatic Tobias Gustafsson. This isn't actually a picture of him, this is another Tobias Gustafsson who's a top-rate dog trainer. What was your favourite record and what records did I miss? Thank you massively to my patrons to help me keep this going. If you want to join them, it starts from as little as three quid a month. You get your name called out, exclusive videos, all that kind of good stuff. Here's another couple of videos of mine you can watch. I'll uh, see you again soon. Spotty dog.